But all of you, I, I need your ideas too. And if you've got something terrific to share, please contact me and let me know. Let's let's discuss it. Uh, democratic <laughs> Good about timing. That. It's a round table. Join the Southern California PGA Teachers Huddle on Facebook and participate there too. So I see there are fewer people roaming now. So again, our our, our anchor app, Mr. Bob Madsen, put your hands together. So that was it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, I, um, one of the things that happened while I was preparing to do this, apart from having fun putting together the pamphlet and trying to imagine what all we would do, is I caught myself trying too hard, which all of our golfers have that problem, I think. If we just did a seminar on how to keep people from trying too hard, we'd probably have a pretty good session. And so I decided to stop trying so hard and made notes to myself as to what I wanted to say. So forgive me, I'm going to do my little note thing and talk for a second. The first thing I want to do is ask you guys, what do you think of when you think of playing? Don't stop. Oh. It's a hint. Anybody, what do you think of when you think of the word playing? Fun. Fun, like what kind of stuff though? Relaxing, social. Good. Give me an example. Good. Anybody? Spontaneity. How about? Be creative. Kids at a water park. Or kind of where I'm going with. Give me some examples of playing. Wiffle ball. Like wiffle ball. At a family gathering. Yeah. What else would your kids do for fun? Video games. Video games. Yeah, I got one of those at home. Imagine. You know, ice skating, skiing, tiddly wings. I think one of the problems with golf instruction is we forget that it's about playing. We're supposed to be teaching people to, to play golf, and there's a chance it should maybe start with that. One of the things I'll do is I'll start people 20 yards from the edge of a putting green. Lesson number one, never touch the club before. Start here, there's a hole in the ground. Do you understand? And they go, yeah. You want me to play? It's like right now, the first lesson? Yeah. You don't care how I hold it? Well, not really. How about how am I supposed to stand? I don't care. Let's just play. So I invite you to start thinking in terms of, of play first and golf second. I'm a recreation professional, um, sort of by decision, by major from San Diego State. And I think that we forget that the people are out there for refreshment and recreation. Uh, they could be flying a kite or playing table tennis or whatever. So that's just one invitation I wanted to make. Uh, I wanted to let you know that I'm swayed as to how I do things. I've been at Saquon Resort. It was Singing Hills before that for 30, 32 years. And I teach a lot of average golfers. You know, what's an average golfer? Well, it's someone who's, who's begun, they've been playing for a little while, but they're not very good. They maybe can't break 100. They maybe can't break 90, sort of in that. Plays every so often, can't practice much, has a job, uh, not a lot of practice time. There's barriers in, in, in the way of their improvement. Uh, so much so that we decided to put this little book together called Easy Bogey, because. So many of my clients can't break 90. So we decided to write about that. Um, I don't teach tour players. I had one student, Byron Meth, won the United States Public Links last summer, the summer before, and swayed also now by having spent 11 days at Augusta National, uh, five trips to Scotland, et cetera, et cetera. We're all sort of swayed by virtue of the shoes that we that we walk in. So some of what I'm going to talk about or show today is is just my deal because that's been my deal, right? And hopefully you'll leave with some tools that you can use that will help you with your deal. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how I think lessons get a bad rap. How many of you have ever interviewed 
an incoming student. Just interviewed him, period. Strongly recommend. Part of the talk is going to be about intuition, and it's an opportunity to keep from having to go off of intuition. If you interview them ahead of time, I use email, send out a questionnaire, and I get data back from the incoming students so they don't have to use intuition so much. Physical challenges, what other ball games have you played, what golf books have you read, people fall terribly, terribly flat. Oh my god. Please tell your students to cancel their golf magazines. <laughs> Let's put them out of business. Um, who was I talking to yesterday? I had a student of mine and I, we sat in my office, I typed and he read. We took one, that's enough, sorry. That's an example of playing, right? You're not going to video them and tell them what they're doing wrong with their... Oy. What was I talking about? Oh. Golf Digest, so uh, was Golf Magazine actually. He he read and I typed, and every time we came across a tip or a pointer or a band aid or a quick fix or any sort of golf advice in this golf magazine, I typed it in and we numbered up. Anybody want to take a stab at how many tidbits of golf improvement information there were in one issue of Golf Magazine? More. 50? Closer, 92. <laughs> now, years and years ago, golf instruction had the uh, challenge of we all talked to our buddies and we all read golf magazines. So then when we wait, went to take a lesson, the instructor had to sort of help us unlearn all of the BS that we had accumulated in between then and the previous lesson. And so what we run into on the lesson T is having to help people unlearn all the bullshit that they've run into since the last lesson. Fred Shoemaker, in fact, told me once upon a time, golf instruction is mostly removal. Okay? Golf instruction is mostly removal. That meant a lot to me. I spend a lot of my days committed to not adding to that gobbledygook. 92, uh, 92 things in a golf magazine. Now there's two golf magazines at least. And what else? Golf Channel. YouTube. YouTube. Golf Channel. I'm trying to learn to talk really fast. So in case I ever get on the Golf Channel. <laughs> like the breed, man. They're talking fast. There's so much data available, right? But we're fighting with that. One of my arguments is there's enough data. What we need is drilling and coaching, and that's partly what we're going to do here today. We're fighting with that amount of information that's available on YouTube and on the Golf Channel and the Golf Magazine. I recommend they cancel their golf magazines and start reading golf architecture books. Your players will score lower if they can read the features of the golf course better. They're beautiful coffee table books. You just Amazon golf course architecture and have them order them all. And cancel their golf magazines and start reading something worthwhile. History of golf, another good topic. Unbelievable to me how few people have even ever read a golf book. It's because we haven't told them about the literature that's available. Tremendous. History of the U.S. Open, biographies, Jack Nicholas, etc., etc. Hello, Mr. White. This is my host in the desert, Mark White. Thank you for coming and putting me up, putting up with me. Um, I mentioned that golf instruction kind of has a bad rap. How many have ever profiled their students and found out that their golf instruction experience had been mediocre. Their past golf instruction experience has been mediocre. Or, worse, how was your lesson experience? Oy. Who did you take lessons from? I can't really remember his name or her name. What did you work on? I don't know, there's so much gobbledygook, I couldn't, I didn't, I wasn't. And I guess that's partly our fault. I don't think it's the student's fault. If a student leaves the lesson overwhelmed and overloaded. 
Um, so it leads me to believe that something's wrong with the golf instruction. It has a bad rap, and people are less willing to take lessons, which means less money in our pockets, and I think it's fixable. But the lessons have to change. If we keep giving the same kind of lessons that to me are filled with tips and pointers and quick fix and band-aids, uh, we're going to continue to have that mediocre reputation. Um, and yeah, it takes looking in the mirror. I don't think we really want to look in the mirror. We just want to kind of go to work and keep teaching the same way we've always taught. Thank you, Billy, for helping us all. Hey, I want to take a look here. What am I doing? What can I do different? What can I do better? This is a quote that I, I don't even know if I made it up or not, but if, if you're a better inventor of games, it'll make you a better instructor big fan of games, drills, exercises, and tasks. I differentiate those from swing thoughts and tips and pointers. You won't ever hear me say try to remember. I recommend take the phrase try to remember and eliminate it from your vocabulary. It's killing people. Because how many things are you going to remember? Apparently 92. <laughs> right? The golf I just be a little better if they gave the data and then said, oh, by the way, I need a thousand reps. Yeah. But instead they say try to remember. So our students have just this unbelievable amount of golf instruction in their heads. But I think if you were a better inventor of games, you'd be a better, better instructor. Um, anybody here know Louise Parks or the name Louise Parks? Uh, best player I ever played with, period, bar none. Louise. Uh, worked at Saquon where I sort of grew up. She was a big sister and, and almost kind of a mother to me. Um, came off the LPGA tour and was working in the shop at Saquon when I was working there. She shoots 70 from the white tees on the big course at Saquon like it was nothing. And I don't think I ever saw her miss inside four feet. Louise Parks Bruce was her last name. And she became a teaching professional. And she asked me a question, it was a few months ago, she's since passed away, God rest her soul, I miss her deeply. And she said, Mom, what's your favorite teaching aid? Thought for a second, I said, the golf course. The golf course, of course, I didn't even know that I knew that, right? But I'm lucky I got 54 holes to roam around at Saquon, there's two 18 hole championship courses, an 18 hole par 3. I'm not stuck at a driving range. Please don't be offended when I say stuck at a driving range if you're stuck at a driving range. Okay, I apologize. Do what you can do, right? I'm very lucky. I got room to roam. She asked me, what's your favorite teaching? I thought, dictionary? Wooden stick. Bummer, my wooden stick got stolen about three weeks ago. I had to get a new one. Had the same wooden stick since 1985. So dictionary, wooden stick, tennis racket, whippy club, golf course. The golf course is the greatest teaching aid. I need a volunteer. Somebody bring an eight iron? Or want to borrow one? I'm not mine. Yeah? Very cool. What's your name? Ben. Ben. Okay, thanks, Ben. So, okay, it's a half hour lesson or it's a 45 minute lesson, and we don't have time to go on the driving range, on the golf course, sorry. I'll tell you what I want you to do here in just a second. Or there is no golf course, so we're stuck on the driving range, okay? So, how can we make the driving range a little bit more like the golf course. Can you just bump a couple out there, maybe 100 yards or so? Because I know you're stone cold, right? And sitting in the classroom. Here, I'll take that. So you guys have a list of drills on your little hand out there, and you're going to have to help me because I don't have the ones that I want to show. I don't have them memorized because I felt like when I was trying to memorize them, I was trying too hard. Louise gave me my first chance to talk in front of the class ever. Did you know she passed away? No, I didn't. I didn't hear that. Yeah, she got sick real fast. And 
By the way, this is the thing that I learned. I'm not sure if it was from the Harmon Brothers. I learned so much from the Harmon Brothers, I can't keep track. But one of the things that Billy and Butch and who else is it? Claude Jr. Yes, you can keep going. Yeah, if, you, if you stop when I'm talking, you, you won't be able to. You can never hit a ball. Huh, Dick? Student's not in charge of the lesson. Who's got the ball? Okay. I don't always keep the balls away from the student, but it's just one offer. You don't want the student running the lesson. a lot of time looking that direction. Well, how come he's not watching the ball fly? Partly he's just warming up. It's a boo. Right? I'm going to fix him. Partly because he's just warming up. Um, partly because I discovered years and years ago if I spend my days doing swing analysis and error correction, I would be in a rubber room probably by now. Love Mr. Mulligan's thing. He stands over here. I don't have quite that much courage with <laughs> all my students. So I stand in a particular spot in case one goes sideways. I can still go home and cook. That's my big thing. Can't wait to get home and cook. Okay, now can you do a couple with your whole pre shot routine for me, Ben? just going to be examples of drills that I use an awful lot. I'm not, I'm not watching his swing. I'm not trying to fix his swing. Same thing. Use your whole pre-shot routine, please. The obstacles are going to be as if it was a boulder, as if it was a bush, as if it was a cactus. Okay, you're going to have to work around. Um, I'm not really interested in watching anybody swing today and telling them what they're doing wrong with their swing. I'm just going to offer these drills and then at the end I'm going to coach and have some volunteer coaches up here. And I invite you to find games and drills and exercises so that you don't have to watch the whole time. Because part of the problem is we're given too much information. That's like an electric fence or a snake or something. You can't you can't stand on whatever I put down, okay? And for as long as it lasts, I want you to go ahead and send it, you know, far or you know, like you would normally, as best you can. can straddle it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Sorry, a little glitch there. <laughs> All that glitch. How can he straddle it? Real wasn't explained <laughs> properly. Be constraints. I didn't have a name for it until I had to put it on the on the handout. I just put crap, crap. What did I originally put? Crap lying all over the place. <laughs> it's the original name for the drill. And then as I was putting the flyer together, the little handout. Prelim. <laughs> <laughs> so gently you don't want to hurt yourself or snap your club, right? Good, so you guys can see where this is going. It's fun to just keep going and going and going. We're going to go a little farther with it. Let me see. 
<laughs> oh, you're gonna hook it back. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the water. I didn't put it there. You did. That's where your drive ended up. After this, somebody. Never. <laughs> well, maybe I can't hear. <laughs> this will be embarrassing. It's an example where he doesn't really need instruction, he just needs a do over. Ready? Can you hop? Mm. Mm. What is that called? A bar? I don't even know. Is anybody a music major? I want you to do one practice swing, and these don't have to be full. I don't care if they go 40, 50, 60, 70 yards because I know it's not familiar. Okay, you're a willing volunteer. It's not an actual lesson. By the way, I know the obstacles drill is good for almost everyone. <coughs> These others may not be. I'm leaving it up to you as to when you would use them. They're just offers, okay? They're just drills for you to take with you and possibly use with your clientele. So one practice swing, uh, um, humming, to make sure you can kind of do it, and then we'll go from there without a ball. Did you guys hear it? Yeah. If you can hum really loud, that'll help the audience. Good. What did you notice about the hum? Not much. Seems pretty even to me. Do it again, please. Nice. 
So smooth swing, smooth hum. Okay. By the way, gotten out my phone, right? You can record and put it right up next to their head so that they can hear themselves. So I try to just ask rather than tell. It's one of the ways to separate the teaching from the coaching. So I want him to realize if there's usefulness to this. Yes. Yes, Bob. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Same thing with the ball. if they want you to hit it hard. Go ahead and is the hit impulse, and you can hear it in the hum. What do you notice about the hum? And was it different, or did it stop again, I wonder? I did stop and start. Yeah. Correct, correct. Um, so if I decided that this was going to now be homework, because I've discovered something, right? There's a. Uh, if you think of Payne Stewart, how many of you ever got to see Payne Stewart in person? It was like a practice one. I suspect he could do this. Mm, probably coming down the stretch in a major, because there's no kick. You with me? It's like a hit detector or a throttle detector. The person goes. Mm, oh, this is no problem. <laughs> it gives you an indication, right, of what they're doing. Um, makes sense. So send this one like a hundred yards, humming out loud, please. What did you notice about the hum? Was it? No. <coughs> so interestingly, and we're going to explore this a little bit later in detail, but now what am I supposed to say? Because I asked him, what did you notice about the hum? So, oh, it's smooth all the way through, lovely. But we know it wasn't, right? Because mm -hmm, or something, there was an interruption in there. Now, in hindsight, can you see that? There might have been a little interruption or hiccup or pause or something in there. Okay, good. Do another one. So, again, I'm trying to ask and invite his 
certainty. It doesn't do the student that much good if you're certain. They have to be certain. What do you notice about the hum? It wouldn't do him as much good to hit full drivers doing the humming exercise as it would to do this. So I think after three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten large buckets of eight iron only humming your swing, that a new level of smoothness, fluidity, rhythm, balance, texture. Ooh. God, I get chills, man. Every time Jamie said texture, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Just cruise in there, make it elegant, show me some texture. Man, I wanted to hug the guy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Great. So there's a new level of smoothness or fluidity or um, give me some other words that you guys like. Elegance, grace, available if you were to do that humming exercise. And then we just try to work it up to the driver over a period of weeks or months. Yes? Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. That was painless, right? Next. That was the hardest one, by the way. What's the next one? Yardage. Hmm? Yardage call shot. All right, I'll do it. Who wants to coach? I'll be happy to do it. Oh, Good, as long as we're at it, by the way, there's these conversation starters, so if there's ever a lull, uh, those are suggested questions that I sort of know the answers to. And prevent you from asking questions that I got no clue on. So, <laughs> conversation starters are there to kind of rescue us in case we get in trouble here. But the next page talks about intuition. Billy signaled the committee that he thought that this session should be different, meaning the two days, that this session would be was too needed to be a little different, and maybe not so much about what I call angles, parts, pieces, and positions. You guys that were at Gibbs heard me tell the story of Jeff Madera, one of my teachers, and he said, if you want to talk about parts and pieces, we can go shopping for chicken. <laughs> the golf swing is not parts and pieces. Okay. So Billy was, Billy was kind of guiding this seminar, and I, and I took it to heart, so I'm like, so I do without the mechanics and coach this stuff all day long. Rhythm and balance. Rhythm and balance. If it gets a whole lot more complicated than rhythm and balance, I start to lose interest. I'm sorry. Let's talk about course management and short game then. Okay, I'm not saying that all of the rest of it is for the birds. It's just, again, I stand kind of in my shoes, have my gig, I've discovered kind of what works for my people. And he chose the word intuition, and I said, wow, that's wild intuition. I've never used the word intuition on a lesson tee in 30 years. I didn't even know what it was, really. I know my wife has it. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she just knows, right? Something's going on with our son. It'll be okay. I'm like, <clears throat> how do you know? She just knows. Sure enough, that's the definition of the word, knowing without proof. I couldn't find much use for it as the golfer, but I discovered there's quite a bit of use as the coach. I use my intuition to decide what I'm going to do with students. I use my imagination. I always call it just creativity and imagination, but it's partly it's intuition. How did you know? I don't know. I just knew. Okay. So this is going to be partly about handling what comes out of the student's mouth. I will be your student. Oh, complete sentence, guy. So what I'm going to have you do is 
All the yardage. The club goes no more than 140, let's say. Okay. okay. It could be 1 to 140. Okay. And we'll just start with that. And then we'll talk about um, comments and considerations here in a second. Go ahead. So you're trying to even say the word. Okay. Sorry, we just went that way. Right. I know. It'd be a 75-yard shot. I'm not targeting these, it's just, I actually kind of wish I had lo yard lines, more of a, I almost said feel, <laughs> it's kind of a field drill, so what if you're chipping out from the trees or you're laying it down there on a par 5 and the situation dictates a particular height of shot, I want my students to be magicians. I want them to be able to play different heights and shapes and yardages of shot. I'd rather that than they had a good swing. So what? Yeah, Mr. Fury. Go ahead. Give me a high one. Oh, you're switching the drill. <laughs> I <I've advanced. laughs> <laughs> It's just the yardage oh, drill. Okay, it's okay. not the yardage with a particular height drill. <laughs> Thank you, though. I'll take that as a compliment. Right. Give me a 50 yard shot. By the way, you'll see a lot of students right away, and it becomes a learning opportunity, is you'll call 50 and they set up like this. What's the problem? You're prepared. Ready for power shot. Yeah. That's a full swing. This is a full swing setup. You just called for 50 yards. But they didn't know. So now you've got a chance to come in and do some instruction. I might take the club, set up like this. I'm going to go 50 yards. And they would immediately go, oh. Right? That's instruction. You can kind of weave instruction in once you discover that there's a need. Ready? Give me a 140 shot. I'm not targeting either here, by the way. Again, something you can do with the students, it's more of a game or an exercise. And now, so on the, on the second half of your sheet, where it talks about what comes out of the student's mouth, this is where lessons get sidetracked. So I want you to take the opportunity here this afternoon to learn a little bit and give each of you an opportunity. Don't fight. And you'll see what I mean. Okay? Your job is to keep me on this drill. Let's say we've agreed we're going to do it for this lesson, or for this bucket, or for this, this amount, okay? So there's kind of an agreement. We're not going to stop until we're done. So now his job is to keep me on the drill. You ready? Ready. All right. We're going to have a 100-yard shot. By the way, I try to get them to not hit it beyond the yardage that I'm calling, but that's a little more advanced. Why wouldn't you want to go beyond? In golf. You're in down. Over the green, or if the stick's in the front and you just sent it 10 yards too far, where is it? It's 30 feet past the hole in the middle of the green, putting. So this drill, you want to refine it and ask them to please don't let it get past the number you call.
We're arguing intuition. Okay? Do that same one again. That same one again. Thank you. That's one of the problems being the presenter. There's saboteurs. <laughs> information, right? We can keep going. Are you going right now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pissing my pants ever since all you people showed up. <laughs> Hunter? You're a drill sergeant. Don't feel like Jamie said yesterday. What did he say? Teaching, uh, talking is not teaching. sure I understand the point. So let's say we've been going for except one o'clock. Okay. The lesson is going to end in six minutes. I recommend punctuality, by the way. Start the lesson at the time you said it was going to start and end it. Unless you make it clear, hey, we're going to spend some extra time together. Is that okay kind of thing? Um, so the lesson is going to end in six minutes and we have to schedule the next lesson. And your next lesson is right there, waiting for their two o'clock to start. With me? Okay, now what was the. Oh. Give me one more. Third yard shot. Oops, sorry, lost track of what I was doing. Okay, over the green, gone. So here's what I would want you to say, for example. You could say something like, you're on your own, I want you to call the next few. Go ahead. You're on your own, I want you to call the next few. Cool, thanks. Because what, when he leaves, who's going to run the practice session? Your you student. Yep. So they have to be weaned off of it. Does this answer your question? Yeah. You got to wean them off of it, teach them how to do it, and leave them alone, let them do it. So, uh, 120. Acknowledgement. So he can see that I can do the drill. Beautiful. Food. Best lesson I've ever had. You're awesome. Same time next week, I'll put it in my phone. Well done. Nice. didn't mean to jump into being a student quite that soon. So now I need another volunteer. We'll do the next drill. Just eight iron? Want to go? Yeah, that's fine. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Your attentiveness is uh, probably more than I deserve.
that I deal with, the percentage of solid contact is more of the issue, but it ties into why they're coming up short. But even the folks that are making solid contact, I find that they're overly optimistic a lot of times. Okay, even talks about in the book, I ought to be able to. See, that's a telltale phrase. If your students are using that phrase inside their heads, they're making the wrong play. Make sense? Well, I ought to be able to hit an 8 iron 145 over the water. See, that's not realistic, that's optimal. My, my it's like part, wishful thinking. My part B is that playing lessons. What exactly would you do in your playing lessons uh, with someone who can play, let's call them a 17 handicapper, who's been playing a while? Now, Matt, what would you do with them? What's, do you have a standard thing about your coaching on course? Gosh, I'm hesitating because I love Billy, but I hate being cornered. Okay, what, what would you do with a 17 handicap for a golf course? Well, then you'd have to follow me around and watch me get 500 bucks. Every single one of them would be different. I don't even know how to. Most Say 17 handicappers? Yeah, yeah. Short game and course management with lots of do-overs. Lots of do-overs. Most of our clients don't need instruction. They know how to stand. They know how to chip. They know how to pitch. They even kind of know how to get out of a bunker and high pitch from deep rough. But no one's come along and insisted that they do it. Where's Tony from PGA Magazine, I watched him about five balls and he with his short game. Problem is not his long game. So what did I ask you? Practice ball. So I asked him, do you have a bag of practice balls? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> no wonder you're a nine. <laughs> that kind of conversation as opposed to giving them instruction and trying to fix them and rescue them and... You get it, right? Uh, where were we? So, which arm is this? Right, right arm, correct. Or, lead. lead arm. Get good at that. Get good at that. You do not want to tangle up your left-hander. Okay? Worth the commitment. What's the next drill, please? Keep it moving. Oh, cool. Go ahead and send it What's over there? Golfers? I kind of wanted to face the audience and hit one. That's fine. <coughs> Here, we'll do it this way. I've actually never done this before. Go ahead and stand there uh, facing me. Who is that? I need to whisper <coughs> to the audience. Can you hold your ears for a second? Like literally? I don't like the word set up. I don't like the word set up. It seems to make me come to a dead standstill. You can't play ball from a dead standstill. So watch close right before he starts to club away. Okay, thank you. Go for it. Did you see it? Yeah, Nobody saw it. So, 
potential motion. Okay. Can you try that for me? Yeah. When I run out of whistle ball, you gotta learn fast. <laughs> Good. It's more choke proof, it's more athletic, it's more playful, it's more intuitive. Don't like the setup thing. But they show it every month in Golf Digest. Do you agree? <laughs> oh man, you gotta get the setup. Would you say you're trying to create a reaction? Like if like baseball is a reaction sport, football, basketball, you're trying to create a reaction. I I actually don't use that word, but I don't know that there's anything wrong with it. Okay. Response, trigger, right. you know, find whatever words are cool for you. So tennis, right? If you're serving and you see me go like this, licking your chops, right? <coughs> you got to be going. I don't play tennis. Because why? Ready. Ready. Huh? Ready to move. You're getting ready to move. Better to be moving. Better to be not standing still is not a good way to get moving. Okay. <laughs> Having fun hitting my whiffle ball. So I just invite him, I said, what if you just kept moving a little bit? and Tony and I kind of talked about my aversion to still photography because what's it going to show? Stillness. stillness. I watch Bobby Jones, I don't see stillness. I watch Nicholas, I don't see stillness. Okay. Can you do one with your routine? Can you count hovering the club like Matt Cooper to be not still? Because count hovering the club to be... Then go. Yep. So it keeps it moving? I, we count hovering the club as part of keeping moving. Sorry. Can you do one with your walking into your routine? With your routine behind the ball? Yes. Moving? And then you're going to put stuff in the way, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you guys are. They're saboteurs. <laughs> trying to blow a hole in my presentation. Yes. So I there's probably better Nicholas uh, mimics. Is that the word? Okay. So I saw something like that. That was the dance and this and this beautiful waggle. Completely unforced waggle. 
as opposed to what I, what we see is our students who have been told they need to set up, and they go like this. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And I'm not even making fun of these poor people. It's because of the data they've run into. They've kind of been sold that. I don't use the word set up unless I'm making jello. Concrete, too, or the cement. What do you call it? Uh, I don't know. Let me get back to him then. I'm going to come back to this gentleman. So I'm going to go in there and just do one, like with my regular. Yeah, your regular setup, but with I think you were running the lesson. I think you were running the lesson just then. I don't think I have a name for it because I don't think there's an it. Billy said, what do you call it? Ready position? Yeah. Sometimes I'll use address, so I need you to be a little more at address. Then you want me to keep moving while I'm doing that? Yes. Kind of a thing. Take, does it take a brown thing? Yes. Like clear the checklist. Did you do that? Yes. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? No. I Did it do take that. does it take their brain off things? The swing thought remover, yeah, absolutely. I find movement is more choke proof than stillness. More removal. More removal, please, coach. Just keep it moving. All right. You're going to keep me on this drill now, right? I want to keep you on this drill. You're going to recognize a comment from a consideration, right? Yes. If you look at the flyer. <laughs> no. No. I want to hit driver now. Really bad. <laughs> I think we should stick with this one. It's going good so far. Let's see good shots. We'll revisit that in a few minutes. It's well handled. Well handled. He was kind to me, but strict. Put me back on the drill. Nice job. We're not good at that, I promise you. Ready? I think it's my ball position. I think the drills don't serve us best. Yeah, but what about my ball position? It was fine to start. I'm paying you for a lesson. I understand that. I really appreciate you doing that. It needs to be further back. I read in Golf Digest. Yeah. I don't I know, know what that is. <laughs> I, never I know you that. want me to keep moving, but I'm sure it's my ball position. I was talking to Uncle Harry yesterday. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we try one with what you just said and see if the results match. I know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay, part of the theme of this thing is intuition. Maybe that was the exact right thing to say. He would have to know maybe a little bit more about me and the game and where we're at, da 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 da. Right? To grant that little bit of wiggle room. What would be another way to go? I think too often we flinch because we get nervous and then it's, and then you blow smoke. Thank you. So this time I'm going to do the same thing, but I want you to fully take it up. Okay. I think it's my ball position. I don't see that being the case. No, I want you to take it up as an issue. Take it up as an issue? This time, yeah. Okay. I think it's my ball position. I disagree. 
I'd like to continue moving the lesson forward with what we've been working yeah, on. Yeah, I got him brainwashed. He just keeps putting me back on the drill. We're trading places here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so keep it moving. Oh, Roy. <laughs> Lead arm, right arm. All right, so show me keep it moving. Good, did you keep it moving? I think I did. Yeah, you did. Should I try one without it? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> 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 just candid and why I come back to you again and again. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. I don't talk to that way to everybody here, okay. so I appreciate you, man. So did you keep it moving? I felt like I did. Good, here. Did you agree? We're going to see. Uh-oh, where'd you go? Good, did you keep it moving? Maybe a brief one. That's all I got to I didn't see it. Looks great. Okay. Either way, that's your homework. another use to learn that from Tag Merritt for video, show them what they're doing right. Get them doing something right and then show it to them. They rarely use video to show them what they're doing wrong. Not rarely, but less. Way more often to show them what they're doing right. So go ahead and do another one and you just decide when you want to ask me about ball position. Okay. You know, the last one seemed kind of high. I was, I was saying if I move my ball position back a little bit, it might actually bring it down for me. Good, so time out. I'm going to bite on that, okay, which is what I want you to learn not to do. You with me? I want the lesson to contain one thing. We already have one thing going, which is keep it moving. Ask me again. I was noticing on the last shot that it went a little bit higher than I liked. Could I maybe move the ball position back and try to bring it down some? Oh, ball position, yeah, that's one of my favorite things to coach. You know what, we've got plenty of time during the lesson. I'm going to teach you everything I know about ball position. Okay? Okay. Go ahead and set up the one. Sure. To which he might have said, I thought you just told me not to set up. But good, so let's move the ball an inch further back. And what would that do to the height of the shot? Should bring it down. Good, so you understand that this club is de-lofted, which is a word I might not use depending on the client. So now how many things does the lesson contain? Keep it moving and ball position. Okay, good. Go ahead. Now let's do that and then ask me about shoulder curves or something else. So we're going to keep it moving, push the ball back about an inch. You know, I was thinking that if I maybe tilted my spine a little bit, if I ever wanted to bring it back up, would that be an option I could go with? Absolutely, to, to kind of yeah, set let's like do this? that. Yeah, okay. I think that's okay. great. <laughs> but that went, <laughs> my, my lower back would be okay though, right? Uh, I'm not a doctor, but, you know, I think while we're at it, just more is better. Let's, okay. you know, we're here for a lesson, so. <laughs> spine angle, that's cool. Like impact? Yeah. Oh, and set up. Set, set up too, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. See one go? Yeah. So you're going to keep it moving, move the ball back an inch, you're going to angle your spine to your left a little bit at setup and at impact. Because it's going to do the wall. It did bring it down though. <laughs> was that because of the ball position? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. But I know you're not going to wear out the sweet spot at this rate. No. Um. What, what is that? Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to explain the sweet spot, and, and we laugh because we're here and we're taking a look at it, but we're guilty. We're guilty, and the person leaves the lesson, okay? We need to not bite. 
They're curious. They want to know, what about my ball position? What about my shoulder turns? What about my swing plane? What about my wrist at the top? What about my, I don't even know what that's called, <laughs> stuff. And you bite on that stuff, and now you leave the person with a lesson that's got too many things. Don't be afraid to give them one thing and make them do it. And part of the reason I face that direction is because I don't really want to know where the ball went. Because he might say something like, why did I pull it? Go ahead. Say a little bit. Why did I pull it? I don't know. Wasn't watching. Do <laughs> you have a camera on? I do have a camera, but no, I didn't have a camera on. We're just doing the drill, so I'm here to keep you company and keep you on the drill. I don't feel any compulsion to even watch him hardly do the drill. I can see out the corner of my eyes he's doing it. I'm just going to stand my ground and make sure he does it. If I watch that ball fly, and then he says, why did I pull it? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's try this. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't guess and then teach. This makes my stomach turn. You guess and then teach. I wonder nobody can break 90. Almost said a bad word. A couple more. Fired up on this stuff. You can throw the ball around the course and shoot in the low 80s. <laughs> people can't break 100. You can... I, I got distracted by the profanity. <laughs> <laughs> Was there really? Did I pick up where Jamie left off? <laughs> Here we got maybe more drills to go and not a lot of time, so one more for me. Good, did you keep it moving? I did. I said it so much. Alright, so you did keep it moving. I feel like I did. Fair enough. Can you practice this on your own? Sure. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More? Go home. What's the next one? Nine ball drill. <coughs> really? That's the next one? We can skip it. Oh, <laughs> um, so, what do the greats have in common? Ah, oh, conversation starter. One of those little cards inside, you get $100 right now. So, I'm just going to. I'm going to just speak about the nine ball drill real quick and we'll get it out of the way. And then don't let me forget, we can answer that question while we're at it if you want. One of my seven irons. And a lot of times I got a piece of, I have a piece of paper and I'll, I'll map the nine shots. So it's forward and close. Middle and close, back and close. So there's middle and square, middle and open, middle and close, back and square, back and open, back and close. I felt like I just made a really crummy diagram there for you. So if we just started with back ball position, I'm going to hit one with the club face square. This is back and square. Something like what you would have expected. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are so loving. Back and close. Something like what you would have expected. Thank you. Back and open. You guys get it, right? Yeah. Bases open, square or closed, balls back, middle or forward. Um, I, I do this way more than I film people's swings and do anal analyzing. I want them to be magicians. I want them to be shot makers. Uh, I want to use the driving range to help them play better golf. 
Okay. Um, sure. Billy could probably tell me if I got it from Mr. Fluke, but I think I got the word free from Chairman McKinney. So I, what can I get for free? Well, if I make him a better shot maker, is there a chance that I made him a better golf swing for free? Yeah. Yes. There's a huge chance that if I make you a better shot maker, you're going to have a better golf swing. I almost don't see how it can work the other way. I don't see how I can make you a better shot maker and make your golf swing worse. Probably possible. But if I perfect your golf swing, I had a gal come from Tokyo five days, five hours a day. She's beautifully dressed, young gal, business person, and looked like a college All-American on the driving range. She's taking lessons on this double-decker range in Tokyo three times a week for five years. Beautiful golf. How many times do you play golf? You play golf once a year for five years. Looks great. Took her on the golf course. Hopeless. Yeah. Hopeless. Couldn't play any shots. So we spent the whole five days and just <laughs> chucking balls into the rough and you know, over into the trees and onto the side hills. She's in tears. <laughs> Why didn't someone give me a golf lesson? Did all these beautiful golf swing lessons. So nine ball drill, it's an offer. You guys can use it. I'm sure you use it for yourselves. I'd like for you to use it for your students. Kind of stay out of their golf swings every once in a while. Hello. What else? Oh, what do the greats have in common? So um, thank you for who brought that up. Thank you. So think not in terms of golf, and I invite that just in general. If you're coaching golf swing, think tennis a little bit, okay? If you're coaching golf swing, think baseball a little bit. If you're coaching golf swing, think quarterback a little bit and see. I don't believe the golf swing dropped in from outer space. Oh, God. <laughs> wow, that looks complicated. I don't believe that. I believe there's more kind of a ball player move and we think a little bit more in terms of frisbee and football and baseball, uh, we can help people more. So. <laughs> so great, not just in golf, I'm thinking of Muhammad Ali. I'm thinking of A.J. Foyt. I'm thinking of Michelangelo. I'm thinking of Albert Einstein, I'm thinking of Bjorn Borg. What do they have in common? Give me an example. Perseverance. Perseverance. Anybody disagree? Perseverance. Love it. What else? Desire. Commitment. Absolutely love it. No disagreement? This is where I needed the flip chart. Skill. Where did Brian have got see? If you guys want to make a note of these, you can type them into your phone or something because I meant to have a flip chart and then we decided we didn't need it. Uh, perseverance, commitment, desire, creativity. Confidence. Creativity, thank you. Confidence, Experiment. courage. Did someone say courage? Yeah, I love you. <laughs> I love you. What was the other one? Passion. Passion. What? Experiment. Like experimentation? I'm a big Dave Matthews fan. Don't get me started. Cooking and Dave Matthews. I wanted, I wanted to have like a big video screen. Brianne will tell you, so that I could put Carter Beaufort up here and we could all watch him play the drums for like ten minutes. <laughs> Talk right. about playing, right? Watching Dave play the guitar and Carter play the drums. It's just I don't want to do anything else. Let's teach more like that. Did you notice that none of those, however many things there were, were physical? And we could keep going. Eventually we would, we would stumble on footwork, or speed, or balance, or stability, or structure, or strength. But the stuff that comes to mind when I think of what the greats, what makes the greats great is all that intangible stuff. Passion, dedication, commitment, courage. 
that component. Hello. Right? We talked about this. Very difficult to put intangibles in golf magazines. They're not being talked about enough. Because they're so busy talking about what the left arm is doing and the right arm and sit on a seat and turn in a barrel. <laughs> the invitation is to get a little better at being able to coach the intangibles. Okay? So we've been kind of hoodwinked into coaching what the body's doing. Sorry, it's my world according to Madsen. Is there anything else on that list? On drills. One practice swing, eyes closed. Nice. Who's my volunteer? You got a club? Clubs. She got yeah. hers. Mimi, right? Missy. Missy. What is it? One practice swing, eyes closed. <clears throat> So I'm going to let you just send a couple out there, Missy, because I know you've been sitting and I know we've not warmed up. So we'll just do a little yardage call shot drill to start. Is that cool? You've got an eight iron there. And you don't have any major physical challenges that I need to worry about. Forty. Brothers might have mentioned that too. Watch out for the club head. <laughs> 60. You didn't do anything wrong. All these guys are doing what I should have One of the tricks I've kind of learned too is just because a student mishits doesn't mean you need to say anything. Yeah. But you tend to panic. Oh God, that's three in a row fast. I better do something. Not necessarily. But we like freak out and feel like we got to do something. things considered too. I mean, we've been sitting in the air conditioning for two days. She probably hasn't touched the club since. When was the last time you touched the club? try this? Again, we don't even know that this would necessarily be the ideal drill for her right at this exact moment. I just want you to do one practice swing, eyes closed. Again. Have you done this before ever? Okay, cool. And then one ball. hitting in front of an audience thing or things 
sometimes we forget how much is possibly going on. Who was it, Mr. Sessinghouse? A couple of, was it these? Last spring. Ago. Wonderful stuff. Bedside manner, taking into account what's going on with the other human being. And don't get all, uh, I gotta teach now. Part of the reason I don't do half hour lessons. By the time she settles down and gets warmed up and is actually ready to rock, it's... <laughs> that was the fuzz of that one practice when that was closed. So yeah. And then one ball. Sorry, I stopped seeing the camera. Yeah, that's why it's closed. But its eyes open when the ball's in. Oh, I see. So one practice swing, eyes closed. Sorry, and then one ball, eyes open. <laughs> Lesson number one. A little bit open or close? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so rhythm and balance. Why would you ever want to do an eyes closed practice swing? Feel. Yeah. Oh, bad word, but. Yeah, it's an okay word. I'm More body sensation. Yep. Okay. Internal. Yep. So I've given some golf lessons. I probably haven't given as many as a lot of the people sitting here this afternoon, but. Every single time I improve rhythm or balance, the ball striking gets better. Every single time. You don't even need to coach both for the most part. If you coach rhythm, the rhythm gets better, the balance is going to get better. You coach either one and get the other one for free. This one tends to coach both. And it's a tool that the student can take with them. I think that I do any teaching whole time out here. Maybe we no. no, I I I mentioned that teaching could take place when the now when you ask for a fifty yard shot and the person comes in with a big giant stance. I haven't done any teaching. I think games are better teachers than us get really good at inventing games and drills and exercises or steal them from others, that's even sometimes better. And they get really good and confident coaching the person up on the drill and keeping them on the drill. I promise you the urge is to panic and teach. And then you panic a little bit more and then you teach a little more. Please do not. Any questions? What about the opposite? Were your students too quiet? I mean, you don't want them to control it, but then you might get, you know, you get like the eight year old that he won't say one word to you, he won't admit to anything, you know, because he won't talk unless his parents are around. How do you kind of? Just flow through that one. You don't want to have 45 minutes or not of <coughs> silence. Right. You think you're not doing a thing for them. You know, you're trying to stick to what your process is too, of how you go through things. Right. And because we're on a very limited amount of time to yeah. answer a really, really good question, because there'd be a thousand scenarios. Correct. Right. Shades of gray. Yep. I get my questions answered. Okay. I'm not gonna beat it out of them. <laughs> might have to ask it a couple, three times. I can tell they're not sure. I can tell they're still churning on it. There's a bunch, you know, but I tend to get my questions answered. If I'm making an inquiry, right. It's a little easier with <coughs> Eric Mitchell because he's going to snap and pop with me. 
the eight-year-old who's a little bit shy, have to treat him a little bit more softly. <laughs> Any of those conversation starters of interest? You can continue if you'd like, or you can be done. I'll hang out with you the whole time. I can talk to them. And <laughs> well, you can. Can you listen and practice swing and golf at the same time? There we go. <laughs> um, so years and years ago, I was coaching a young man by the name of John Lieber. He turned out to make it into the Buick. I think it was maybe still the Andy Williams at that time played well enough on the Monday qualifier or whatever and got in as an amateur. Um, and we were training together one day. He was hitting shots and I was hanging out with him. And he hit this one really crappy, like sort of pull, pull hook. And he said, I knew that was going to happen. And it hit me like a bolt from the blue. I never want to hear you say that again. Because why? It's just going to happen. Because if he knew... Why did he swing? <coughs> what? Why did he do it? Why did he swing? Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, just an innocent little thing come out of a student's mouth. I knew that was going to happen. And I went, huh. I never want to hear you say that again. And so from that, we developed a name for it. Okay? You're the captain of a submarine. And up on the wall, the, oh sorry, <laughs> this presenting you. thing is tricky. Isn't it? You do that. You gotta be do. Thank you. I gotta be doing two. I have to pee. It's not really. <laughs> uh, I really have to pee. Um, where were we? Oh, submarine. Up on the wall, there's a big red light with like a cage around it. Okay. If that red light goes off, something's wrong. That's the flail sensor. If that red light goes off, do not start the engine. Right? Your car is going to blow up. Okay? And so if you're over the ball, may I? Yeah. 